Live from the Library of Congress, this is Awe Abeyari reporting for Public Affairs. I'm with Remy Grafalda, and she's a playwright, now curator and librarian for the Library of Congress. What brought you here to the Library of Congress, Remy? Um, I was invited to be the first Asian American Pacific Islander collection curator because there was no such uh, a collection in the past. This is the first time we have it. Most of the APA books are scattered all over the library in several divisions, but here in the Asian Reading Room, we have primary materials that deal with Asian Americans. Mm -hmm. And tell me about this special collection about the Philippines. Well, I'm also the Philippine specialist, so I put up uh, quite a few Philippine exhibits or displays here in the Asian Reading Room. And today, uh, this, uh, January, is about to be the last day of the Rizal display of the trial transcript and his execution, his time at Fort Santiago, etc. And speaking about the Rizal exhibit, the 115th anniversary celebration, I understand you were actually the one who pioneered this exhibit at the Library of Congress. Yes. Um, here in the library, if it only concerns the reading room, which is the Asian reading room, or other reading rooms, it is called a display as differentiated from formal exhibits uh, conducted by the library. For instance, there will be in April a Cherry Blossom Centennial exhibit. And that will be all over the library. Outside there will be posters and announcing uh, the exhibit. But here in the reading room we call them displays. So this year, this I mean last year, uh, in June, we had the 150th anniversary of Rizal. So I put out for people to see all the books that related to Rizal, especially the Nolly and the Feely and uh, his family tree. There was a very interesting um, book about uh, the letters that he wrote to his family, it was compiled by the, by the Rizal uh, Historical Commission. And uh, all his letters are there. And it's not printed. They photographed it so that it's his actual handwriting that you can see and who it, it's, it's addressed to. And then we had a, a book also on his travels. Uh, he traveled a lot. Don't forget that his family was not exactly poor. They were of the Illustrado family. And they had lands, and uh, uh, and of course he had ar the family had arguments with the church about church holdings of lands, so uh, this got them into trouble with the government. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of the viewers will be very interested in knowing some other details about Dr. Jose Rizal. You mentioned that uh, you have the Noli Metangere at the Library of Congress, but this is not the original. Yes, this is a facsimile of the manuscript. Uh, of Rizal. So everything is in, written in longhand form. And this is, is probably the one that he submits to the publisher in Berlin. However, the copy we have is his one of his copies where you can see where he deleted some passages, where he added some passages. So all his edits are in this particular facsimile of the Nolly. And then we also have a facsimile of the Fili. And you will notice that the size of the Noli, Metanghere, and the Fili are not the usual books, you know, that's eight and a half by 11 or five by seven. You know. they're, they're large ones. They're about, they call it 23 centimeters or, you know, they're, they're big ones. They're called folios. Mm -hmm. And then when it is published, it's published in a smaller version. Mm -hmm. We have most of the translations of Rizal's Noli Metangre here in the library. One very interesting one that I found that I, I was particularly interested in is a 1902 version uh, because um, it, this particular version, still in Spanish, had a foreword, and the foreword was by a correspondent, a newspaper man, who witnessed the execution. And he talks about it in the foreword. And I thought that was the only book that had a postscript on the execution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I find that pretty valuable. And another significant uh, information that you brought this morning was about the fact that Dr. Jose Rizal, though he's a very prolific writer, but he was really discovered after the book Los Sucesos, written by Antonio Morga. Tell us about it. Um, by 1890, he had already written quite a few 
books. But the one that exploded him in the academic world was his annotated version of Morgas Sucesos, because he wanted his fellow countrymen to know that uh, Europe knew about the Philippines because of Morgas' book that talked about the Philippines quite favorably and explained the people's traditions and all that. But what Rizal did additionally is he took the book, he took the manuscript of Morga, and he annotated it. So he put in his criticism of what Morga said, or he praised Morga in noting in his insights about the Philippines and all. So it was the first book that was done that way on, on Philippine literature. So when that book came out, his annotation, he exploded in the, in the academic world as a serious writer. Mm -hmm. But before that, he had already written Nolly and Phoebe. Yes. And the book came out six years before he was executed. So all the time that this book was coming out in the publishing world, he was in Dapitan, right? He was probably, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> he probably didn't even know that you know, his annotation was getting all this publicity. Yeah. Well, it's really very important that uh, uh, Remy Refalda, who is a playwright, is here. Remy. Remy is at the Library of Congress. And that uh, I'm sure you have a lot of other projects in mind. Well, one of the important projects I would like to attempt is uh, perhaps in December 2012, I can do an introduction of uh, the Philippine-American War by doing an exhibit on the pa uh, Treaty of Paris, uh, where it showed that the Philippines was already a republic, but was traded by the Spaniards, actually sold by the Spaniards to America for $20 million. And I would like to put also the books written by Mark Twain, when he commented on this particular uh, travesty of a country being sold when it was already a republic. Um, and I thought maybe I'd bring other points about the Treaty of Paris to show that the Americans actually betrayed the Philippines uh, and that started the Philippine-American War. Wow, there's so much more uh, to look forward to, especially this year. I would like to thank you so much for the opportunity and for your hospitality and say a line of greeting to the entire world. Oh. Hello world, please come to the Library of Congress because we have almost everything here that would be of interest to you, especially if you are a Filipino in the diaspora. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, Aoi Bayari live at the Library of Congress with Rene Grefalda right here on Public Affairs. Thank you so much and may God bless you.